Some years ago, I made, as an experiment, three gramophones for the playing of horizontal cut records and having papier applique horns of the type used in the famous EMG gramophones made by the company of that name and called these experimental Monmouth gramophones numbers 1, 2 and 3. They were purely experimental. There was no question of predicting in advance how they would sound, so it was a case of playing them to find out. Uh, see these three on YouTube. The conventional wisdom is that bigger horns sound better, but to my surprise, with single-sided pre-1910 records, the one that gave best results, particularly in the bass register, was number one with the smallest horn, but the one with the greatest degree of flair. Having viewed the fascinating three-horn acoustic test posted on YouTube in 2012 by Graham Rankin, it seemed to me that the degree of flair of a horn is a vital ingredient in its performance. And so I made experimental Monmouth gramophone number five. Uh, number four was for Pathé vertical cut records, which was simply gramophone number two with a widely flared extension to the horn. The mould for horn number two was mounted some 14 inches above a baseboard and extended downwards to create a horn mould four feet, 1.2 metres, in diameter at the open end, which was used to make a horn extension of some 34 layers of pasted paper. This was then fitted over the horn of gramophone number two by feeding that horn through it and joining the two components using bolts. There follow recordings of verses 1 and 2 of In Diesen Heilgen Hallen from Mozart's Die Zauberflöte, HMV record DB1551, Matrix CLR62622, sung by the Ukrainian bass Alexander Kipnis, recorded in April 1930. Verse 1 is recorded on gramophone number 2, Verse 2 on gramophone number 5. The microphone was in the same position for both recordings and the settings of the recording equipment were the same for both. I leave the listener to judge. Personally, I think I came upon the law of diminishing returns. <laughs>